In this lesson, we will be covering Autodesk Inventor's application options. Application options are used as a global setting throughout every file inside of Autodesk Inventor. So for example, if we switch something in a given part settings, it'll affect all of our parts and drawings and so forth on down the line. To get to our application options, go to the Tools pull-down menu. And second from the bottom, go ahead and select on Application Options. And in the Application Options dialog box, we have multiple tabs that are available here. The tab that is current is the last tab that you were on. So in this case, if it's your very first time in, you'll be under the General tab. And in this lesson here, what I like to do is just cover some of the basics inside of the Application Options. These other settings we will cover while it's pertinent to the specific lesson that we'll be covering at that time. So under the general tab here, we have the startup area. So if you're brand new to Autodesk Inventor, you may want to turn that on. And then you have some settings that are going to basically give you the help system in regards to your proficiency level with Autodesk Inventor. Also, the next section here is the startup action. So the very first time that you bring up Inventor for the day, do you want to see the open dialog box, the new dialog box, or do you want to create a new file based on a specific template, and then you can direct it where to go. These other options in regards to the, the tool tips and appearance, we'll cover that when we get to the sketching area. On the right hand side, we have the username, and that's going to be used when we go back and we create our drawing views. The text appearance as it's being shown in the browser. We have the option to display it from the different font as well or as an 8 or a 9 point. I'm going to keep mine at 9 point, a little bit larger for us to see. The show 3D indicator, let me move this over here. And that's going to be our X, Y, Z. So the X is equal to the red color. Y is going to be green. And blue, that is our Z axis. What I'd also like to point out here on this is going to be the undo file size. By default it's at 256. We recommend setting that up to 1000. So Autodesk Inventor, the undos are not unlimited. It's all based on the file size that you have here. So the higher this is, the more undos and redos that you will have. Let's quickly take a look at some of these other tabs. The save, and this is going to be asking you one specific operation occurs, do you want to be prompted for that save or not? Under the file, this is going to be where Autodesk Inventor is going to be storing specific files like the undo files and where it's going to be looking for operations, in this case maybe a template file or the content or, or VBA files. Under the colors tab, this is where you can go back and designate the background color. So in this case I have Millennium set. And let's go ahead and click on Sky. And down near the bottom of the dialog box, I'm going to click on Apply to go back and see that change without leaving the dialog box. And let's try one more. Let's take a look at Forest. As you can see, it's just a single color right now. But we do have two other options here. I can change that to Gradient. And again, click on Apply. And you'll see in this case, now it's a little bit lighter and a little bit darker up on top. So if you have a high-end video card, you can definitely use Gradient if you'd like. But if you're lacking on RAM on your video card, definitely recommend a single color. And the same thing is going to hold true using the background image option. So in the, this case here, with the background image, I'm going to click on the Navigate button. And these are some bitmaps that ship with Autodesk Inventor here. So in this case, Let's see what the sky galaxy is going to look like here and apply that. So now I have a whole bunch of shooting stars on my background. Again, if you're not using a high-end video card, this is not recommended. So I'm going to take it back to a single color. And I'm going to switch back to Millennium and go ahead and click on Apply. Now under the Display tab, this is going to be the option that we can set for how the models will be displayed here. So do we want to see the silhouette edges in the wireframe? And how do you want that model to specifically appear while it is being shaded? We can go back and set those options here. 
under the hardware tab, this is where we can go back and make some settings here if we're having some hardware related issues here, or if something keeps on happening to Autodesk Inventor, you may want to come back down and run the diagnostics and it will tell you if your specific card and driver that you're running is certified. Under the prompts tab, so here is where you can go back and set how a given dialog box is going to keep on occurring here. So if you don't want to see a specific one, we're going to come back in here and we can make that change. The other tabs, let's run across the other ones. So we have the drawings tab and obviously this is going to be the settings here that are going to be how our drawing views and dimensions in this case are going to appear. Again, we'll come back and cover that in another lesson. Under the notebook, this is going to be how our engineer's notes actually appear. Under the sketch tab, this is extremely important here. You'll notice on the background here, I have a part file that we're in a sketch. So in this case, again, we'll come back and take a look at some of these other options. But as long as we're here, I would like to recommend that you go back and click on edit dimension when created. And what that's going to do after placing a dimension it will automatically pop up a dialog box allowing you to change that dimension directly without having to double click on that dimension, save you some time. And also with the auto project part origin, what that's going to do every time we create a sketch, it's going to project the zero zero point and that's going to make our sketching a lot easier. On the upper right hand corner, we have grid lines and the minor lines and our axes. So as you can see, they're already displayed here looks a whole lot like AutoCAD in this case. I'm going to apply because I'm going to turn those off. But again, it's all up to you. If you want to use those grid lines, by all means, go ahead and do that. Also, we have Snap to Grid. So if you're used to working with AutoCAD snaps, you can turn those on here, even though we're going to leave them off because we really don't feel like we need them inside of Autodesk Inventor. But it's there if you would like. Under the Part tab, this is how a specific part is going to be created on what what plane. So iFeatures, iFeatures would be very similar to a block library so we can tell Autodesk Inventor here where to look for those given iFeatures. And of course some assembly information when we get to that again we will come back to that tab. I'm going to move this dialog box up so you can see the bottom of the screen here. We have two other options that I'd like to point back out. So after I have all my application options set what I could do is I could export that to an XML file. Then I can always bring that back, maybe if I'm switching machines. And then, of course, once we have that exported, then what I can do is I could go back and import that back into a new computer if I wanted. So those are the application options inside of Autodesk Inventor.